Around 66 million years ago, dinosaurs disappeared from the Earth, except for the ones that eventually turned into birds. Suddenly, the Earth went from the age of dinosaurs to the age of mammals. Scientists have special names for these time periods, the Cretaceous and Paleogene. And the event itself is called the KPG, or KT Extinction. Picture this dramatic moment in Earth's history. It happened in the blink of an eye. A colossal asteroid as big as Mount Everest and traveling at lightning speed slammed into Earth. It crashed down in what we now call Southern Mexico, at a place known as the Chicxulub Crater. The impact was gigantic. Everything close to it was instantly vaporized creating an enormous burst of energy, one of the most powerful in billions of years. Nothing could survive near the crash site. As the fiery aftermath cooled, the Earth's surface went haywire. The ground twisted and trembled, causing unbelievable earthquakes. The continent started to literally bounce. Then, the ocean floor got all stirred up, provoking the gigantic tsunami. Massive waves surged inland around the Gulf of Mexico. The debris that got blasted into the sky started falling back to Earth like a rainstorm. Even if you weren't close to the huge pieces falling in Mexico, you'd still get hit by smaller, super-hot bits flying through the air. This heated up the atmosphere so much that forests all over the world burst into flames. The dinosaurs that lived far away from the impact area first felt a little rumble. Suddenly, the sky turned dark and gloomy, as if it was nighttime during the day. The temperatures dropped drastically, and this night during the day lasted for several weeks. And then, a blanket of ash started slowly covering the entire planet. Nasty things like carbon dioxide and bits of the seafloor started floating around in the air. This messed with the temperatures once again, making it swing wildly. The Earth was hot and cold at the same time. Nature was suffering. Forest fires, no sunlight, dangerous gases in the atmosphere. All this caused big problems for plant-eating dinosaurs. They started to vanish, and the meat-eaters were having a feast. But not for long. Soon enough, the whole food chain fell apart. This is when somewhere between 50 and 80 percent of dinosaurs said their final goodbyes. What's even sadder is that this number only counts the different types of dinosaurs. If we look at the number of individual dinosaur lives lost, it's even higher. Here's an interesting fact. If the asteroid had hit just 30 seconds earlier or later, landing in the Atlantic or Pacific rather than just off the coast of Mexico, we might have had some non-avian dinosaurs still around today. But the way it happened? The asteroid struck with a force equal to 10 billion Hiroshima's. But the only ones who made it were our mammalian ancestors. They were little shrew-like creatures who had super-fast energy systems, adaptable diets, or clever hiding spots. These early mammals survived because they were tiny and didn't need much food. We're incredibly lucky that they survived this chaos they probably didn't even understand what was happening. They just noticed the horrible smell, huge bodies everywhere, acid rain, and volcanoes erupting. So now that we know how terrible this event actually was, let's talk about a big question. Could we, modern humans, survive something like this? Well, it depends. Research from a different asteroid impact about 790,000 years ago suggests we could but it wouldn't be easy. In that other event, a massive asteroid hit Earth once again. Just like with the Chicxulub asteroid, it sent debris into the atmosphere that covered a tenth of the planet's surface. Scientists found the pieces of that asteroid's impact, glassy rocks called tektites. They analyzed these rocks and discovered a rare mineral called rheodite. It requires extremely high pressure and temperatures to form. After studying it, scientists assumed that the impact happened in Southeast Asia, probably near Thailand. Strangely, they still haven't found the exact crater. 
But the main thing is, the asteroid collision did happen, and our ancestors were around during this. It surely got their attention, even though they might not have fully grasped what was happening. The debris from this event would have caused significant climate changes. It's tough to understand how it affected our humans' evolution. All that we know is that we survived it. Currently, there are about 1,200 asteroids on a list of potential asteroid threats. But luckily, we're not in immediate danger. These asteroids are smaller than 0.6 miles in diameter. The chance of a massive asteroid like the one that hit Chicxulub between 3 to 9 miles wide, striking Earth is incredibly low. Major events like this happen about once every 100 to 200 million years. On top of that, most asteroids are located between Mars and Jupiter and don't pose a threat to Earth. However, there are thousands of smaller asteroids that could potentially hit us. Most of these are small and burn up in the atmosphere, causing no harm. Some larger ones could damage buildings or cities, but wouldn't threaten all life on our blue planet. But what if a comet or a serious asteroid were to collide with Earth today? In that case, first of all, it could alter Earth's orbit. The initial energy released during an impact would cause a scorching blast wave of 570 degrees Fahrenheit. The fire would ignite vast areas of the Earth's surface. Then, it would cause a long-term impact on winter. The smoke from the megafires, along with dust and water vapor, would form a thick layer of clouds in the upper atmosphere. Just like with the dinosaur event, it would reduce sunlight and cause temperatures to drop for decades. Most plant life would die off within weeks. Large trees might survive for decades due to stored sugars and a slow metabolism. Beyond that, not much life would remain, except for microbes and smaller creatures. There are three possible strategies for humans to deal with all this mess. The best strategy is to prevent the impact in the first place. Scientists are already searching for asteroids that might cross Earth's path and discussing how to defend against them. One option is to use our biggest weapons to break up the asteroid into smaller pieces. These tiny pieces could miss Earth or burn up in our atmosphere. That would work for asteroids around 0.6 miles wide. However, this won't work for massive Chicxulub-sized asteroids. The amount of energy we'd need to destroy them exceeds our entire current arsenal. But if we notice the asteroid early enough, maybe a series of blasts could change its course and save the day. And according to the researchers, asteroids larger than 25 miles in size would be nearly impossible to stop with our current technology. Luckily, the chances of something like this hitting Earth are very tiny. But okay, what if we can't prevent the impact? Here comes the second strategy. We'd have to go deep underground and create large bunkers. We know that many burrowing or deep sea species survived the mass extinction 66 million years ago. So these underground habitants could protect us from the direct impact effects like blasts and fires, as well as an impact winter. We'd have to harness the Earth's natural heat and live inside protective domes. They could be built in stable continental cores or deep beneath the oceans. We'd have some essential supplies like food, medicine, fuel, and water. Maybe even have some gene banks to preserve species. And the last strategy would be to copy the movie Don't Look Up and to ignore the problem until it's too late. We know that it would take collaboration among governments and institutions from many countries to design, build, and launch a series of devices into space in order to prevent the impact. If humanity will be able to pull that cooperation off, that would be a miracle. In any case, NASA takes the threat of asteroids pretty seriously. It has a well-thought-out plan involving early detection, assessment, deflection strategies, collaboration, public communication, and backup plans to protect Earth from these cosmic dangers. So we can only hope that if something like that happens, logic would prevail. Big herds of dinosaurs run through the forest. The temperature rises rapidly and everything behind them begins to ignite. Some dinosaurs get stuck in swamps and can't get out. 
Pterodactyls fly over their heads as they try to avoid the blast wave that will soon cover the Earth. This event happened about 66 million years ago. It wiped out almost every living thing on Earth. Birds and flying dinosaurs were just about the only ones who could survive the most massive extinction event ever. Hey, don't blame me, I wasn't around then. Let's go down their evolutionary tree to look at the world's first bird, Archaeopteryx. It was about the size of a modern raven, but it looked like a small dinosaur with feathers. It had many small, conical teeth, almost like alligators. It's because Archaeopteryx was closer to reptiles than to birds. However, its brain was three times larger than that of these reptiles. Although it had wings with feathers, it could hardly fly like modern birds. Its shoulder joints didn't allow it to lift its wings above its back, so it couldn't make a full wing beat. Most likely, Archaeopteryx was capable of gliding flights with small wing flaps. Evolution has led to more evolved species capable of full flight. Pterodactyls. These guys had no feathers, but membranes made of skin and muscle. Its wingspan was about the length of a human leg. It could fly perfectly and catch fish and small animals. Although flying dinosaurs could easily outrun terrestrial predators like velociraptors and T-rexes, most of them didn't make it through the impact of a giant meteorite. Let's look at this event step by step to see how they got to our time. 10 minutes before the meteorite crash. A massive rock about the size of Manhattan Island is moving towards Earth in space. It weighs 460 trillion tons. That's like 3 trillion blue whales, the heaviest mammals that ever lived on Earth. And it's approaching our planet at 12 miles per second. At that speed, it could cross the Atlantic Ocean in just 4.5 minutes. That's twice as fast as our modern spacecraft could fly. 5 seconds before the meteorite crash. Ooh, this is getting tense. The Earth's gravitational force continues to pull the giant meteorite. It blows a hole in our atmosphere and creates a popping sound so loud you could hear it on the other side of our planet. All the animals on our planet wake up in a panic. They lift their heads up and see a huge rock that begins to burn through the air. Smaller fragments start to break away from the main meteorite. This fire is so bright that it shines almost like the sun. Flying dinosaurs and other ancestors of modern birds are the first to sense danger. They make a beeline to the sky and try to fly as far away from the impact site as possible to save their lives. The moment of impact. The colossal mass and velocity of the meteorite give it an enormous amount of energy. As soon as it touches the Earth, it causes an explosion of 150 trillion tons of TNT. The blast wave literally rips out chunks of our planet and throws them up. A huge wall of energy begins to move from the point of impact in all directions. It snatches the trees out with their roots and pushes them to the ground like dominoes. The shockwave completely wraps around our planet. This energy turns into heat. Everything around the impact site begins to ignite. Green jungles and trees turn into smoldering charcoal in seconds. The ground and rocks simply evaporate. The collision caused a massive earthquake. Some dinosaurs may have fallen into cracks that appeared in the ground. A strong earthquake caused a tsunami with waves higher than the Empire State Building. Dinosaurs that weren't trapped in the burning forest were washed away by the enormous waves. The dinosaurs of North America try to escape by running to the north, but the blast wave inevitably catches up with them. Flying dinosaurs have no problem with earthquakes or tsunamis. They fly high enough to avoid the giant waves. But they will have to contend with continuously falling meteorite debris. Five minutes after the meteorite crash. A meteor shower of giant rock fragments continues to fall to Earth. Some meteorites were the size of a car. Others were more like a large building. Ashes and dust rise into the air. Their temperature is so high that they melt and turn into liquid lava and then fall back to Earth, causing more fires. Meteor showers cause trouble for flying dinosaurs, too. They have to maneuver and dodge the falling red-hot rocks. The high temperatures are a huge problem for them because it might make them lose feathers. With no feathers, they aren't able to fly. 10 hours after the meteorite crash. The dinosaurs continuously ran north all this time. They found themselves in unfamiliar territory with many swamps. Giant dinosaurs like T. rexes have legs as long as an adult human's height. They have a chance to get through this terrain. But if they fell, they could never get back up. The smaller dinosaurs, like Triceratops, had short legs and couldn't grow through the dense swamps. One month after the meteorite crash. 15 trillion tons of ash were ejected into our atmosphere. A dark cloud blocked the sun, and the Earth was immersed in complete darkness. 
Surviving plants couldn't feed on the sun's energy and stopped producing oxygen. Surviving dinosaurs could hardly breathe because of the lack of air and a large amount of dust. The lack of sunshine in the sky made photoplankton disappear. Many marine animals were left without their only source of food. The dust and ashes in the atmosphere prevent our planet from getting heat from the sun, and the temperature here is beginning to drop. The place where the meteorite fell was rich in sulfur. This toxic acid evaporated at the time of the impact and formed in clouds. Now there are acid rains on Earth. Flying dinosaurs now have to hide from these rains. They have to stay in caves and can't go outside to get some food. So far, a large number of terrestrial and flying dinosaurs have survived. They come out to see the aftermath of the disaster. The site of the impact was in present-day Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula. The Chicxulub Crater is located here. It's about 93 miles wide, like half of all of Lake Michigan, and it's 12 miles deep. You could plunge the whole Mount Everest in there, and there would still be 6.5 miles of available space. It wasn't the impact itself that made the dinosaurs disappear. The fire destroyed most of the plants the herbivorous dinosaurs ate. With no food, their numbers dwindled rapidly. Predatory dinosaurs had nothing to eat either. Acid rain and the disappearance of photoplankton threatened all marine life. Even though birds managed to avoid the blast waves and tsunami, they were short of food too. About 80% of all birds didn't make it to the end of the extinction event. The problem was that all of the forests on Earth were wiped out. Most birds would nest and live in trees. Besides that, the forests were always full of food, from all kinds of ants and termites to flying insects and small mice. So only those species that lived on the ground and could fly well survived. Most likely, they fed on the seeds of small surviving plants. This habit made flying dinosaurs lose their teeth during evolution. Instead of jaws with a bunch of sharp teeth, they got long beaks to grab tiny seeds from the ground. Although Earth looks like a terrible place to live now, there's an evolutionary boom for birds. They have to travel long distances in search of food. Their wings get stronger. They also feel safe from predators who regarded them as food before. No T-Rex now catches a sleeping bird off guard. About a thousand years after the collision, the first dense forests appear. It gives another boost to evolution. A million years later, forests full of food are populated by the ancestors of modern mouse birds. And 65 million years later, in modern times, we have about 10,000 species of birds. Pigeons, crows, eagles, and hawks, even penguins. These are all descendants of the dinosaurs. But there were other survivors. Some alligator and crocodile ancestors were able to adapt to changing conditions. About 80% of turtle species managed to survive the mass extinction, and now their descendants live among us. Snakes and lizards were also able to wait out the hard times in their burrows. Even some mammals, like monotremes, survived. This hedgehog-sized animal was able to continue to evolve. Many millions of years later, these mammals evolved into primates, which later gave life to modern humans. Much, much later came the iPhone. Boom! An explosion of supersonic waves, interplanetary heat, dust, fumes. The Earth's atmosphere has been invaded by a cosmic rock the size of Everest. A few seconds ago, this rock, weighing trillions of tons, was hurtling towards Earth. It could fly from New York to Anchorage faster than you could fry yourself an omelet. This monster's name? The Chicxulub Incident. Epic name, right? 66 million years ago, it crashed into the Earth. Back then, dinosaurs ruled the planet, but not for long. The epic collision took place in modern Mexico, in the Yucatan Peninsula, right near Cancun, where the dinosaurs were vacationing. Well, probably not. Still, the huge space rock hit the ocean, but even all that water couldn't stop the inevitable. The collision caused a huge amount of energy to be released. The horror on a planetary scale had begun. Imagine a mini-sun lighting up the surface of the Earth with tsunamis the height of the Statue of Liberty bursting from the epicenter of the watery impact. Hmm, not good. The blast blew through the surface of the Earth. It was as hot as an oven and burnt everything in its path. The impact provoked a colossal earthquake and serious volcanic activity. A bunch of volcanoes simultaneously released hot lava and ash into the prehistoric skies. Millions of tons of ash and soot poisoned the air. 
This formed a huge ash cloud in the atmosphere, which blocked out the sun's rays for several years. The long winter had begun. Only, there wasn't any snow falling from the sky, but rain made of sulfuric acid. Yes, the Chicxulub incident might just be the most important thing that ever happened in the history of our planet. Even more than YouTube. Back then, there were loads of volcanic eruptions, a lot of flammable oxygen in the atmosphere, constant temperature changes. It was the perfect and worst time for all of this to go down. So, how are we so sure about all this? Well, the asteroid left an absolutely huge crater on the planet's surface. Today, this scar is hidden under the Gulf of Mexico. Scientists found a lot of places on Earth with abnormally high levels of iridium. This metal is very rare on Earth, but it's in a lot of asteroids that scientists have examined. Scientists studied some 66 million year old rocks. In the layers of rock, they found dust the same dust that comes from asteroids. This could only have happened if a huge asteroid had crashed into Earth. The catastrophe led to the extinction of not only the dinosaurs, but also the asteroid. It was so hot at the point of impact, part of the asteroid just disappeared. A lot of water vapor and carbon dioxide shot up into the atmosphere. But the biggest problem? Sulfur. It got kicked up by the asteroid impact and flew up into the air. These tiny sulfur particles blocked out a lot of the sun's rays. Without the sun, a lot of plants disappeared and the climate eventually got colder. The immense heat turned stones into glass. Scientists call these things tektites. The energy of the impact threw them up into the skies. After a short flight, the tektites fell down to Earth. But it wasn't pretty. Rain fell too, only instead of drops of water, you'd have seen hot, glassy fireballs. They bombarded the planet's surface for days. The tektites set fire to everything. Scientists found evidence of this all over the world, not just near the collision site. But a lot of things from back then are still a mystery. Some scientists think that Chicxulub wasn't even an asteroid. It might have been a comet. Asteroids are mostly made of stone and metal. Most often, they kind of look like a potato. A comet contains rock, metal, and ice. Comets look like dirty cosmic snowflakes, complete with ammonia, methane, and carbon dioxide. Comets sometimes come from the Oort cloud. It's a huge cloud of ice and debris around our solar system. From time to time, comets break free from the pack and head towards our sun. According to scientists, this special comet flew right past Jupiter. The gravity of that huge planet accelerated the comet even more. It flew towards the sun, gaining more and more speed. The comet's outer ice shield started to evaporate, and it probably gave off a lot of dust and gas, which made it look like it had a tail. The sun's gravity eventually shattered the comet apart. One of the fragments flew through space and crashed into the Earth 66 million years ago. So, asteroid or comet? The truth is, we'll never know. What we do know is that the Earth was seriously unlucky to be in its path, and it was never the same again. The catastrophe stopped the development of 75% of life on Earth. Some bigger marine animals, like crocodiles, turtles, and fish, survived the impact. Out of all land animals, the only ones to survive were the ones that were, on average, smaller than the modern raccoon. That includes a bunch of special species of dinosaurs, the ancient ancestors of birds. Scientists believe they survived for two reasons. After the huge impact, it took a long time for plants to start growing again. And a lot of animals didn't survive. Most remaining animals didn't have enough food. But these dinosaurs had a beak. With its help, they could split open nuts and dig seeds out of the soil. So they survived. The second reason is that these lucky guys had bigger brains. Some people think that they were able to cooperate with each other and quickly adapt to the new conditions. Other life forms survived too. Fungi and mold survived underground and underwater. Gradually, the darkness cleared away and ferns began to take over the lifeless landscape. After a few thousand years, forests started to reappear. The animals that survived were pretty much all inconspicuous and small creatures. They lived in burrows, safe from all that hot ash. Before the collision, 
mammals had lived in the shadow of dinosaurs. But with all the dinosaurs suddenly gone, things were about to change. Mammals were able to take over. They began to dominate life, at least on land. Back to the moment when everything changed. Turns out, it wasn't the size of the asteroid that made it so powerful. It was more about the angle in which it hit the Earth. If the angle of impact had been different, the dinosaurs might have even survived the catastrophe. So, what would that have looked like? Well, let's travel back. Way back. Oh no! There's a giant asteroid heading for Earth. Ah! Oh, wait! Never mind! It missed! There are plenty of earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions every day. But dinosaurs don't mind that much. No big deal. Fast forward a few million years, and most of these ancient lizards have changed and are now unrecognizable. Thanks to a couple of ice ages, many dinosaurs are now totally covered with feathers to protect them from the cold. Mammals exist, but they're few and far between. You see a lot of bats in caves. There are tons of rat-sized rodents in the forests. During the day, they hide in the undergrowth or in burrows. At night, they go out in search of food. There are no horses, no elephants, or other large mammals. Why become large and eatable when there are so many dangerous reptiles with huge fangs around? There are no whales in the sea. Parrots, hawks, and pigeons are nowhere to be seen. But pterodactyls 2.0 whiz past you constantly. Some are about the size of a helicopter, while others are no larger than a swan. There are plenty of primates, but they're in no hurry to climb down from their trees and walk on two legs. No venturing out into the savanna, no evolution into Homo sapiens. In this alternate reality, open spaces are very dangerous. But then again, so are forests and trees. Nowhere is safe. To get some delicious primate treats, many smaller dinosaurs learned to climb trees. This was already happening back in the Cretaceous period, right before that huge asteroid just missed Earth. Whew! That would have been an epic collision. Dinosaurs have grown wiser since that near miss. Some are even as smart as a modern chicken. A large brain uses a lot of energy, and that's not always a good strategy for survival. Safer to keep brains small and keep making those teeth bigger and pointier.